So this video is about using a basic crane scale for an isometric mid pipe pull. So you can get pressure plates but they're really expensive so I'm going to show you a really cost effective way to get the same output that's been proven for very good accuracy. So I'm going to show you some of the equipment we're using. Right, so to set this up I've just used a 25 kilogram plate just from the gym. Uh, any plate will do just to weigh the ratchet strap down. The ratchet strap is just a, a normal ratchet strap from Amazon. It's got a maximum capacity of 300k. Uh, and that matches the crane scale. So the maximum force that can be pulled to this in a safe manner is 300 kilograms. Uh, obviously for this experiment that's plenty. Uh, and then attached that I've got a bar uh, with a clip that came with the crane scale. So overall it's about a 50 pound setup um, as opposed to a pressure plate which is obviously going to go into a thousand. So it's a really cost effective way to measure that isometric mid thigh pull uh, output uh, for that maximum force. So Pete's just setting up on the crane scale. Uh, he's got it on his mid thigh, so we can get leg engagement. And uh, we're gonna pull. We're gonna do five pulls for five seconds with a minute rest in between, and then we record them. So we're gonna go a little bit closer and we'll record the output of the uh, crane scale. So on my cue, Pete, you're gonna pull and then we're gonna scrub and find the, the highest values. So three, two, one, Go! Pull, 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 keep going. Okay, and stop. So that's one pull, so we'll scrub through now and find the uh, maximum uh, output. Okay, so over in Microsoft Excel, we can use an isometric mid thigh pull recording sheet. So this is available as a free download within the description of this video. Um, so we've got the athlete name this side. We can use the athlete name or an ID number, however you internally categorize your athletes. Now, this is the date uh, that the isometric mid thigh pull was performed. And then here is the body mass of the, of the athlete in kilograms. So if your athlete weighs in at um, pounds or stone, obviously that needs to be converted to, to kilograms. Uh, to keep it consistent for that one athlete, but also when comparing to different athletes. Um, so these are the attempt numbers, attempt 1 to 5, so remember as an isometric mid thigh pull we need to do 5 5 second pulls with 1 minute rest in between. So simply all we do is enter the numbers that Pete performed in this instance on this mid thigh pull. So his first one was 142.6, we go across, attempt 2 is 136.7 and we simply just enter the data that we're recording whilst we're in the gym. And then last one. Okay, so these are our attempts. So obviously we can see that attempt number four was the highest, 151.5. Now when we're doing the mid-thigh pull, there's obviously there are other external factors that we can take into, into account, such as wearing wrist wraps, just to take away the, um, the issue of, of, of grip strength, I guess. Um, so. If you're going to use that for one athlete, do that for all the athletes and obviously keep it consistent. Uh, this, this one here is the peak kilograms, so this looks at the highest number across the different lifts. So obviously we can see lift number four, so we're recording this. This is the peak in newtons, um, so this here we take that value of 151.5 and then we times that by gravity, which is 9.81 and this gives us the peak. This one gives us the average of our five lifts. So from uh, attempt number one through to attempt number five, we're looking at an average of 143.58 for Pete. And then exactly the same as before, to take the average of Newtons, we take the average, which is 143.58. And we, again, we times that by gravity to give us the average Newtons. This one is a relative force, which is newtons per kilogram. So this basically tells us how many newtons per body mass. So I'm dividing that by the weight of that athlete. So this is really good for comparing athletes together. So in this instance, this athlete B, can perform a relative force of 14.18 newtons per 
kilogram of body weight. So it's a really good comparison for different athletes. So this is a really good column to use. So what we do then is we can enter different athletes in. Um, so we can enter a different athlete name. We can put a date in. We'll just put a random date um, just for, for uh, testing purposes. We've then got body mass of kilograms, we're going to put 60 and so on. And then I'm just going to enter uh, the numbers in. So 55, 56, 57, 56, 55. Obviously, this isn't a particular athlete. I'm just, again, just demonstrating how the sheet would work. So again, looking at the peak kilograms, the peak Newtons, the average kilograms, the average Newtons, and the relative force. We can change the relative force. So at the minute it's looking at Newtons per kilogram. We can change that. So instead of looking at Newtons, we can change this to peak kilograms. So it shows that this athlete, if I copy this down, so this athlete can perform 1.45 kilograms per kilogram of body weight and then this athlete can perform 0.95 kilograms per kilogram of body mass. There's a really good way of comparing one particular athlete athlete that is maybe has a higher body mass the one that has a lower body mass. Obviously mass moves mass um, so it's not always comparable to look at their attempts but it's really good to look at the relative force. So that's how you use this spreadsheet and obviously I really hope it helps you uh, with your performance recording of your athletes.